Let's draw the lowest structure, determine the vesper geometry, and then determine any dipole moments and uh, molecule sulfur trioxide. Let's start with the lowest structure. Count up the number of valence electrons. Sulfur, oxygen are both in group 16. Check out the last digit of that group number. It'll tell you how many valence electrons they bring to the molecule. And each of them bring in six. And there's four of them, one sulfur, three oxygens. And that gives you a total of 24 valence electrons to work with to build this Lewis structure. Next, sulfur goes in the center because it's less electronegative. So put set sulfur in the center, surrounded with the three oxygens. Next, we need a bonding pair between each of the terminal atoms and the central atom. Each of those bonding pairs uses up two valence electrons. We're down to 18. Next, let's get the terminal atoms, the octet. Each of these oxygens already have two in the bonding pair, so they're going to want six more. To reach the octet. Now you'll notice the central sulfur does not have an octet. It's got six valence electrons right now, so we can take a lone pair from one of the terminal oxygens and make a, another covalent bond, in this case a double bond. So let's do that. We'll just take it from up here, make a double bond. Now, of course, there's resonance to this, so let me draw that. So here we go. We've got the other two resonance structures. Now, these are all superimposed at the same time. That's what that means. They're averages of each other, so you don't have uh, a single bond here and a double bond there, but rather you have uh, an average uh, of 1.33 bonds between each of the sulfur and oxygen are equivalent. Now, you may have considered... Uh, the formal charge on this, and if you did, you'll notice that each of these oxygens that have a single bond to the sulfur have a formal charge of one negative, and then the sulfur in the center has a formal charge of plus two. So you may have considered moving another lone pair and making another, making a double bond between each of the sulfurs and oxygens, and then you'll get this lower structure. which does appear to be more stable in terms of formal charge. Now, um, we, we observe the, the 1.33 uh, bond average between each. So we're going to use the, the resonance structures on the left. Now, in terms of the Vesper geometry, it doesn't matter which of these you use. And by the way, uh, in, in my class, any one of these Lewis structures would would be uh, perfectly fine. Um, now onto molecular geometry. Doesn't matter which one of these you use because each of them has a sulfur that's uh, central that has three regions of electron density or steric number of three. And so when you have three regions of electron density and there are no lone pairs, in other words, they're all connected to other atoms, then that molecular geometry is trigonal planar. And they'll have a bond angle of 120 degrees. Again, there's these, you don't have a double bond that's more repelling than a single bond. These are all uh, resonating between each other. So they're all equivalent bonds. So we have a bond angle of 120 degrees. Finally, let's take a look at the, uh, the uh, electronegativity difference between the sulfur and the oxygen and you'll see that there's a delta chi or a difference in electronegativity between the uh, sulfur and the oxygen of one. So each of these, because oxygen is more electronegative, each of these bonds um, are polar bonds. So the oxygen side will take on a partially negative charge and then if you want to say the Sulfur is going to take three of those partial. Has to be opposite in charge, right? 
because the molecule is neutral. Now, even though you have these polar bonds, because the molecule is symmetrical, then that means the molecule has no dipole moment because they're all pulling in their own directions, but those cancel out. So the answer to the last part is no dipole. In other words, the molecule is nonpolar.